So currently on my Jeep, I'm running the Rubicon rock rails that come from the factory. And I've applied 3M paint defender all along. And it's a pretty good product. And you can't even see there's a seam right along here where that paint defender line is, where it stops being. So it's really transparent. I love the look of it. Now the problem that I have with it is when it does scuff, it peels. And so you can see small bits of peeling here, and you can see small bits of peeling here. And on the door threshold, it isn't really strong enough to be the only product that you run. So I'm going to install from Bushwhacker a set of guards. I'll show you what those look like in just a second. So here you can see I've started to peel off most of the 3M. And I've already removed the rock rails. And I'll show you how to do that in a different section. But what we're going to do is install this. And this is the Bushwhacker door sill plus rocker panel guard. And it's going to go in its place. And you can see it is a really nice look and it covers the door sill so the door sills won't scratch, along with providing protection from scratches from the dust and the dirt that you kick up when you're going on the off-road. There's two things that hold the, the panel in place. There's this 3M tape and then there's these screw holes that line up with the same screw holes that the rock rail took. So the first thing we're going to do is prep the surface. So I had 3M paint on before, but I'm going to take it off and I'm going to only apply it where the, the new cover is going to cover. So the, the new sill and kick plate cover is going to be covered with the 3M stuff, but to make sure that I get a good stick, I'm going to gooby gone first and then I'm going to wax it. That 3M is going to make sure that whatever gets between the door sills and the paint doesn't scratch the paint because it's going to vibrate a little bit and that 3M tape isn't going to be a totally perfect seal against it. So I want to make sure that all of those years of dust that are going to accumulate in the future and the little bit of water that accumulates in the future doesn't scratch and rust the paint that's underneath it so that if I ever want to take them off, I have a clean finish. And that's what the 3M paint defender is going to do for me. I'm also along the way going to remove the Wrangler Unlimited logo here. I know some of you will say that that's sacrilege, but it's a Wrangler. If you can't tell what it is, then there's something wrong with you. I want to have a nice clean look, and I think the cleanest way to get the clean look is to remove all of those, those stickers. I've already removed the ones from the hood that said Rubicon, and I like the look of that. It just makes the vehicle look that much classier and that much more expensive, which is part of what I want when I'm spending the money on a Rubicon that has that leather interior and that polished feel. This isn't your old CJ7. This is the new Wrangler and it's just a totally different vehicle and so no more decals. So I was literally blown away at how easy this is. I'm just taking my fingernail, getting up underneath the sticker and peeling. And you can see all of that gunk that I'm leaving behind, but we're going to come back with the gooby gone, and that's going to take that off really easily. So different people say different things about the gooby gone, but for me, what works the best is to run a bead of it just above what I want to remove. And that's probably 10 times more than I need, but it will soak in much better. I missed the R over here. And I missed the W over here. Now, we're going to let that soak for 10 count, if that. And now we're just going to take our rag and you want to be firm, but you also want to be aware of how much pressure you're putting on because as you can see, this panel is not the best made and gives a lot and you don't want to leave a dent from trying to remove it. And you want to keep applying Gooby Gone until it ends up being slimy. So what you really want to be able to do is get all of that adhesive off. Not just spread it around. You want to feel it coming up on the cloth. Now, if you leave the st these logos on for too long, 
they won't ever really come off because the difference in the amount of UV, UV bleaching that's happened to the paint will mean that it doesn't quite work the way that it should. And you'll have this spot that's permanently darker where the Wrangler logo used to cover it up. So you want to do this fairly early in the life of your vehicle if you're going to do it. I've also heard that afterwards you can hit it with a UV lamp and that you can accelerate some of that, but I haven't tried that, so I'm not going to say that that for sure works. There you go, that panel is now freshly free of decals. And we'll apply some wax to it before we put the 3M paint defender back on down below. So all I've done here is actually put the thing in place and then close the doors to hold it in place so that I can figure out where the line is going to be on this and make sure that everything's gonna line up right. So I can see that my holes are gonna line up at the bottom. I can see where I'm gonna to wanna to tape off so that I can spray my 3M paint defender and protect the paint from the, from the buffing of the bushwhacker. And so this is the next step. So we're gonna use the actual 3M wax that's bundled with the paint defender stuff. That may not be the synthetic wax that I would have chosen if I were really going to wax my car, but since it's the one that they recommend, I'm gonna go with the manufacturer's recommendation. And basically I'm putting this on too heavy but because I don't have to worry too much about the buffing off of it, I can do that. So, because this is not going to be a spot that's seen, it's just going to make sure that my 3M Defender paint defender is removable. Because if you don't prep the surface, and what happens is that when you go to remove the 3M Defender, it doesn't come off and it doesn't become like an Invisibra, it becomes like really bad clear coat. I've wiped off the wax, it doesn't take very long. Now, the interesting thing about the way I'm going to do this is because this is not going to be seen, I don't have to do a super uh, uh, great job on it. I just need to make sure that I get everything covered and that it's ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is put it on heavy and close and that's the reason I only need like this one inch bar or barrier between me and it. And I can wipe off any overspray that I have. And today's a windier day than I should be doing this on. And it's a lot better if you can do it in a garage because any dust that gets on this normally will stick to it and then be part of your your spray. And then you specifically don't want to do what I just did and get it on the matte surface because you don't want that matte surface to turn shiny. And like I said, I put this on thick and close. And it will not at all be clear when I'm done because all I want is a surface that I can adhere that 3M tape to. So right now I'm about 15 minutes into the drying process and you can see that the spots that I didn't really cake it on are dry. So while I was waiting for the paint to dry, or the paint defender to dry rather, I went through and basically made the rocker panel and the, the rocker panel and the rock rail into one thing. I bolted the two together. Now I basically cinched everything down so I could make sure that all of the holes would line up and that the screws would go through them well. So now I'm going to undo all of that and basically that will make sure that everything fits together well. Now the trick on this one is I'm going to have to put this into place with the doors open. And probably the right thing to do is to either take your doors off or make sure that your doors can't swing but I'm probably going to be lazy, and so I'm just going to prop them open and call it good. But basically, you've got to have room for this to go on where the door is while having a spot for these to line up underneath. Now, 
because it's a pain to get underneath there to show you how things work, take a video of what it looks like underneath. But essentially, I'm going to put this bolt in first after I get all of these through the little holes so that it will stay in place. That will take the weight off it so that I can line everything up the right way. But I'm going to use this bolt very loose so I can get everything else lined up. And because it's one unit, I don't have to do the alignments twice or put the new rocker panel kick panel in and then worry about whether or not it will line up. Okay, so you're going to take off all of these screws. This is a 13 millimeter bolt. And then you've got to remove all of these as well. And there's probably an order that's best for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the two at the ends, the front and the rear, and then I'm going to take off all of these. And then down here in the middle, I'm going to do this one last so that it holds all the weight until the last possible moment. Okay, so I have enough screws and such that it's held in place, but now I've got to get this so that it lines up and it's held in place with the actual tape. So I'm going to bend it forward and I pull the tape off and I've got to push it in place, clamp it down, and then close the door. Okay, there you go, that's the finished product. You can see it offers a good deal of protection against your, your rocker panels. The rocker rail is still in place, and now there's a little less gap in there, so you're less likely to get small stones in there that could do some more permanent damage. And I now have sill guards, so I don't scratch when I get in and out of the car. And this is what the final product looks like on the inside, so it matches very nicely with the inside plastic, and it gives a good deal of protection.